Hey guys, hey everyone, how are y'all doing? It's your girl Twin D and thank you so so much for stopping by tonight, morning, evening, afternoon, twilight, whatever it is where you are. Thank you for stopping by and thank you guys especially for coming to this her. Thank you so so much. Like I always tell you guys, this whole journey or our whole life is not just about what we want for ourselves and what we are receiving but the most important thing is to give thanks for what we have we have a lot of people on here on youtube here and we have a lot of us who are twin flames we have a lot of us who are just going about our daily lives twin flame or not but we are all human beings and we are all here for a purpose there are a lot of us who have gifts and we we need to use those gifts but we do not know where we need to be we do not understand what our purpose is and that's because we are not doing or looking in the proper direction to where we'll find find the answers we're not going to god because to most people god is for christians but what everybody seems to forget is that everybody is a sinner until you make the choice to serve God. So nobody was born a Christian. Nobody was born serving God. You have to make the decision to say, this is what I want to do or this is what I don't want to do. And then you follow in the footsteps of your decision so you'll find your purpose when you decide to serve God because then you'll be on the right path the path that God set out for you and that's how you'll find yourself that's how you'll align yourself for this union that we are all so looking and longing for on this twin flame journey we've got to start trusting God we got to start looking to God for all we need and I have a couple of things that I want to talk to you about today I want to teach you guys about a couple of things. One of them is forgiveness. And the other one is faith. The reason I decided to do this today is because in our questions and answers that we do on Thursdays, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Don't miss it, guys. It's very important. Somebody asked, like, how do we pray for the karmics? And my response was that you pray for them, but you also pray for them to make sure that they change. Like you pray for them to change because everybody has a chance to change your ways. Everybody has a chance to do good. Everybody has a chance to, to, to change your dirty ways, repent from what they were doing and do differently. These people that we call karmics, they are being used by the devil. And nobody likes to hear when we talk about devil and God. But if you think it's otherwise, then I'm sorry, you have a big problem. But they are being used by the devil to make sure that God's servant, the twin flame, stays stuck in their negative energy, stays stuck not knowing what they are good for, stays stuck not being able to connect with God, and staying stuck so they are never able to unite with their divine feminine and their divine masculine. So that we could have a union with two people that are meant to serve God, that are meant to teach God's people, that are meant to bring God's people back to him. And if the more people that the devil gets not in union, the more people he can stop, then the more hatred will be in the world. The more sadness will be in the world. And that's what he wants. But if we truly understand what we need to do on this journey, if we are truly turning to where we need to turn to for the strength on this journey, for that faith, to make sure and ensure that unions do happen, then we will have more twin flames coming into union. We will have more twin flames out there teaching, showing. And in teaching and showing, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to go become a teacher or whatever. But in through serving God and doing what God wants you to do, you will find your purpose. You will find your purpose. That's the only way you find your purpose. When God is leading your life. And. 
I was on um TikTok and I I I found this um lady. I think she was called um Proclaim Greetings. I think that's what she was called. And she was talking about the situation where um Celine Dion was sick and I think they had said that she had asked for Christians to pray for her. Or she asked for Christians to yes, that's what I said. She asked for Christians to pray for her. And this lady, I have the video, I'm gonna show it to you. And she, she asked, or she was saying that, remember that it was just a year ago that Celine Dion put out a clothing line that is um, leading people away from God and telling people that they can be whatever they want. Uh, they, they can, a man don't have to be a woman, a woman don't have to be a man, whatever, whatever um, Celine Ad was saying, right? Because basically that's what she's saying. You can do whatever you want. Like, it doesn't matter if there's a God. It doesn't matter what God says. You choose to do what you want. Yeah, but every time you choose to do what you want, there's consequences behind it. Now, it's been a year, she says, since she posted that ad. And now, a year after, she's dying from whether something is unknown or incurable, whatever it is. I, I didn't look into the news. So, I'm going to show you that video. And then I'm going to show you why it is so important to forgive. And we'll talk about that as well. So take a look at the video, guys. Just last year, this same woman released this clothing line. It is a clothing line that has a lot of satanic activity. It is a clothing line that says that girls shouldn't have to be girls. Boys shouldn't have to be boys. There's a lot of material that you can find on the Internet where Celine openly speaks about the God that she serves. And it is not the God that I serve. It is not the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. It is not the God who sent his son, Jesus. She chose her God. We did not choose her God for her. She chose. And every man has the right to choose. We have something God gave us called free will. And she chose her free will. And she chose her God. And now that she's sick with a disease, just a year after releasing this clothing line, now that she's sick, she needs prayers. And many, many Christians are praying for her. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't pray for her, but I want you to be wise and I want you to know how. And as an intercessor, I want to share with you what I've been taught. Anytime someone has made themselves an enemy of God, there is a specific way that you need to pray for them. How you need to be praying is very specific. Now, I'm going to read to you James 3.3, 3, okay? James 4.4, 4, I apologize. James 4.4, 4. you adulteress. Do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility towards God? Therefore, whomever wishes to be a friend to the world makes himself an enemy to God. Okay? And so when you go to God about his enemies, you have to not pray his mercy upon them just because. You have to be honest with God and say, Lord, I pray that she repents. I pray that she asks for forgiveness. I pray that she renounces her connection to Satan and she renounces any authority that she's given Satan, any doors that she's opened that has allowed this disease to come upon her. I pray that she finds the God that I serve. I pray that she would know your love. I pray that she would know your healing powers. But I pray, Father God, because to whom, many, to, to whom much is given, much is expected. And I pray that that same Celine that she would keep that same energy that she had in that goober dusting blowing commercial that she released last year with her wealth. That she would now fall upon her face and repent and ask for your forgiveness so that your healing power, the only one true and living God who can heal, that you, Jesus, would heal her. Let's go to Neiman 1, 2. A jealous and avenging God is the Lord. The Lord is avenging and wrathful. The Lord takes vengeance on his adversaries and he reverses the wrath for his enemies. All right. So that video right there, the reason why I showed you that one is because that video will help us as Twin Flame. In going back in reference to how do you pray for our karmics. So... I use that one to give you the example of how you should pray for your karmics. Because like I said, everybody has a chance to change. Everyone has a chance to change. That's 
why you forgive people for what they do to you. And you pray for them. You pray for them to turn from their evil ways, to repent, to do what's best for themselves and others by not doing evil. By not doing evil against you and by not doing evil against anybody else. And I also, um, I also talked, um, I also had said in response to the same question, how do you pray for your karmics? And somebody also asked, like, what happened to them when you pray for them? Right? And the first part that I was talking about in them having the chance to change. And through that video, when you ask God to, to give them the knowledge, the understanding, so they can see their evil ways and change from it, that we also help them to change. And I have another, I have a scripture here. I have a scripture here and I will read from Romans 12, verse 20, I see. Romans 12, verse 20. And I'm going to go a little back and forth here because everything I want to talk about when I, it's, 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 it, it's intertwined with forgiveness and faith. So just try and listen and follow along. So it says, Romans 12, verse 20. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. And that was my response when the person asked what happened. What happened to the karmics when you pray for them? Because I, I did not remember which scripture this came from, from the Bible. But see, like I'm always saying to you, everything I, I tell you, I mention, it's in the Bible. I just can't remember where I found it because I have read it before. So I know it's there. All right. And then it says 21, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So guys, it doesn't matter what these karmics want to do to you. It doesn't matter what these karmics are doing to your masculines or your divine feminines. Forgive them of everything that they do. Pray for them. Pray for them. And in doing so, what I get from this part where you will heap burning coals on your head, it's like it would be like pressure. It would be like a pressure to change, a pressure to do good, the pressure to become a better person, the pressure to change from their burning ways. I said burning ways <laughs> from their evil ways. So that's what I get from, from, from heaping burning coals on his head. Because if anybody's anything on your head, it's hot, it's heavy. You're, you're going to change something to get rid of that. You're going to change the way you, 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 you're holding something. You're holding that hot pot, whatever. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to change it by taking it off your head. You're, you're going to do something to change. But if you are to the point that you're so evil that you don't want to change, even though you, you feel this burden, this pressure to change, because someone is wishing for you to do good instead of the evil you're doing, and you still do not change, then that's how you suffer from whatever experience experiences you go through. So now let me read from verse 1 and see how everything is intertwined here. So Romans 12 verse 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Verse 2. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but, but, but be transformed by the revenue. Oh my God, what am I reading? Guys, pray for me. It's like, I can't, I can't read. <laughs> Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And what I get from here, when it says to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, is remember on this twin frame journey, what are we fighting? Our ego. Our ego is what we are fighting. Wanting to become a better person. And the only way to become a better person, we have to overcome our ego. And it's right here. Romans 12 verse 2. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So again, change. Change your mind. The things we used to think, I mean, the things we used to do, how we used to think, we no longer do those things. We, we no longer think those ways. We get rid of the ego. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. And see, that's what I just said. Once you get over your ego, once you get off of that energy, 
then you will be able to see what God's will is for you. But once we're operating in our ego, once we're hanging on to hatred and unforgiveness and sadness and what other people do for, have done to us, then there's no way for us to change because we're still living in the world. Be ye not conformed to the world, to the patterns of this world. Number three, for by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more, hi more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment. And this is because none of us, we are not special in that we are better than anybody else. So throughout our lives, the devil used us as well. So the karmics, they are different from us. We aren't better than they are. It's just that we made a choice to not do evil. While they made a choice too. Right? But rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. And you see how faith is intertwining here with forgiveness as well? Just as each of us has one body with many members and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we who are many form one body. And each member belongs to all the others. So you see, that's why I'm always telling you guys. As twin flames, we're all connected. We're all meant to do God's will. We're all God's servants. We are different people. We all serve a different purpose. And the only way, again, you're going to find your purpose is if you get out of your ego and start allowing God to guide you. That's how you'll find your purpose. Because a lot of people ask, how do I find my purpose? How do I know what my purpose is? You have to allow God to lead you and guide you on your path. Then you will see your purpose. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. And here you have love. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. And this is why I'm, I am always saying like, once God called you to do something for him, he's going to change you no matter, no matter how you were before. He's going to change you. And that's why we have to go through this twin flame journey because we need to change. We have to change. The old self dies down. It gets sheds away. Becoming a new person. And that's why we cannot do things again like we always do when we were not when we have not discovered ourselves. I mean, before we discovered who we truly are. And again, if God wants you to do his will, he's going to change you before he starts to use you. Right? Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourself. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual favor, fervor, showing, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. So you see, everybody's God's people. He didn't single out anybody and say, um, share with God's people, the ones who live on the left, the ones who live on the right, the one who is doing this, the one who is doing that. No, everybody. Share with God's people who are in need. Everybody who is in need is God's people. Everybody. Practice hospitality. So you see now, guys, why we have to change and why I am always telling you we need to walk like God did, talk like God did when he was here. And that's how people learn from us. That's how people change their ways. We don't have to be standing in front of somebody and say, you need to change for them to change. They follow us just by what they see within us. And I'm going to show you another video as well in regards to that. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. You hear that? So even though we can't stand the karmics, <laughs> like I can't stand them, do not curse them. Do not wish them bad. Because like I said, everybody has the chance. Everybody has that chance to change. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. And again, a lot of times when our masculines are going through hurt and pain. Because they caused us hurt and pain in the past. You have some of us who will say, yes, good for them. That's what they should get because they did this to me. So you, you want me to read that again? Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. So if your person is going through trials and tribulation and they're sad, understand their feelings. 
know what it is like. Because we are not the only ones. And this is why, again, it says not to not to um, look at ourselves as being different or above anybody else. All right? Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud. Do not be proud, again. And this is a, this is a big word here, proud. Because in, in the world right now, you know they use the word proud to, I don't you know to say, not, not identify or explain this group of people. They are proud. You're proud. But do not be proud. But be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay, do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written. It is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, now we're coming back here. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And it all ties into forgiveness. That's how you forgive. That's how you do good. And that's how people see who you truly are and they follow you to do good as well. Hence, bring in more God in the world. But if you're going to repay evil for evil, or you're going to think you're better than anybody, even the ones I'm saying that say they're proud and because we know that they're doing something wrong and they don't want to change, we're going to say we're better than them. No. No. Because like I said, every one of us, we've made mistakes. We've made wrong choices. But when you pray for them, they have the chance to change. That's what this world is about. That's what twin flames are about. Helping others to change so that they have a chance at life. Alright, so this next video that I'm going to show you, it comes from the same from the same lady, Proclaim Greetings. Because I was going through her videos and I saw this one as well. And it also, this is, this is how I tell you how people learn from you just by looking at you. And at times, we will see people staring at us for no reason. Like everywhere we go, we see people staring at us. And it is because of what they see on us or what they see within us. Because everybody can see people for who they truly are. Everybody knows. And that's how the karmics, they know. When these masculines are meant for greater and meant to do better with their lives. They know, they see it, they feel it in the spirit. And that's why they try so hard to hold the masculines down. Because they know if the masculines get away from their grasp, the masculine is going to become a powerful force. And they don't want that. They don't want that. So listen to this video again from her. And you'll see why it is so important to act like God. And do what God always wants us to do. Forgive love because people are watching us and they see God within us. This is a story about a day that a woman told me she saw Jesus in my eyes. So I was volunteering at this ministry. And this woman that would come in sometimes started staring at me. And I was saying... Hi, like, you know, you're okay today? What's going on? And she was like, she started giggling. And I, you know, gave her a smile. And she said, I see Jesus staring at me through your eyes. And I said, huh? And she said, Jesus, I see him. I see him staring at me through your eyes. And I was like, really? And she was like, yeah, he's staring. And I was shocked completely shocked the, in that moment I felt never before in my life have I ever felt so unworthy so unclean so uh, confused but at the very same time I've never in my life felt so chosen so kingdom so anointed and appointed and I thought about it and I, I remember asking the pastor about it and he said, yeah, you know, people say that they can see Jesus in us, you know, and see us, see him in our eyes, you know, as Christians. I've heard before someone saying they saw Jesus 
in someone's eyes. And I had never heard that. I didn't even know it was possible. I didn't even know what the lady was talking about. Um, I was kind of shocked, almost like, to be honest, thinking, does she know what she's saying? Um, but, you know, what's very interesting is that as I thought about that, I thought we have the character of our parents, right? You ever in life hear somebody say, oh, you you know, you acting like your mama or you acting like your daddy or you acting like your auntie, you know? Um, oh, I see, I see your mama in you, right? I see, I see your mama in you. I see your daddy in you. And what do they mean by that? What do they mean about they see your dad in you? So basically, they mean that they they see a resemblance to your spirit. You know, they see a resemblance to your ways, to your to your actions. You're acting like your mom would act. You're acting like your father. So I, I was wondering, did she truly see Jesus in my eyes, looking at her and staring at her, or did she see in me my father? Did she see in me Jesus because I was acting like him and showing her love like Jesus would? The very interesting, interesting moment. So that is a story in my journey being a Christian that I will never, ever forget. I hope you were listening very well so you can understand what I've been trying to say to you guys. So, like most times I can't even explain everything I'm trying to say. But so, so sometimes when I see these videos that, that truly explains it, I, I, I'll show it to you so that you'll see that Twin D isn't talking rubbish, you know. <laughs> Twin D isn't talking rubbish over here and I'm not teaching you guys foolishness. <laughs> All right, guys. So the next thing I want to talk about um, now is, is your faith on this journey. Try not to lose your faith on this journey, guys. This is all we have. This is all that's going to get us through this journey. This is all that's going to get us through in life. All that we need is faith. That's all we need, faith in God. And Hebrews 11 verse 1, and I want you to take notice of the numbers. Hebrews 11 verse 1, and that's 111. And 111 signifies what? A new start, a new beginning. And in order to have that new start and that new beginning, what do you have to have? Hebrews 11 verse 1, faith. And it says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So all we have to do on this journey, guys, pray to God, have faith in God, trust that God will deliver. If we keep looking at what's going on over there, we're going to miss what should be going on in here, within our heart, within ourselves. And what should be happening for us and the changes we should be making and the best, the better that we should be making our lives. We're going to miss all of that because we're busy looking at what is happening over there with the masculines and the karmics. So we should never pay attention to that. And through faith, guys, whenever you're going through a situation and whenever you come across like a roadblock, a challenge, these tests that I'm always telling you that you'll be tested. So if you say, God, I've forgiven this person because you tell yourself, I've forgiven them, right? So there is a test. A test is going to come your way to show if you have truly forgiven this person. And these tests, whenever they come, the first thing we do is go in depression and we go in sadness and we think about all the, the unhappy moments we had. But that's not what we are supposed to do because I'm learning as well as you. I learned this today, right? I've learned, I learned this today. Whenever you're going through your struggles and you feel that terrible moment coming on because you keep remembering what happened. You are facing situations that are taking you back in the past where things offended you. But you said, I changed. I'm a different person. So things are going to come up from the past to see if you are really ready to serve God. So when these challenges come up, guys, instead of going back in our past and bringing up old negative feelings and doubting God because this is where doubt now comes in that makes us think like God isn't doing anything for us. God, nothing is working. Like God, I thought you said that this is what it's going to be. But look at what's happening over there. How can it happen if you say this is what it's going to be but they are having fun over there? This is what your trust and your faith in God will get you what you desire, what you need. So when those negative moments come on, Instead of crying or talking badly to God or whatever. Or getting upset, angry, feeling rage, anger, hate. You pray. 
This is the time that you are really being tested. Are you going to trust in God for what he told you that's going to come your way? Or are you going to, soups, just go back to your old ways? And if that is what happens, then you know you're not ready for that union. And it's the same thing I always try to explain to you. Your masking is going to come up and bring a wound that you bury deep down on the inside. And once you work on that wound and you say, oh my God, I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm cured. I, 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 I'm not dealing with that situation anymore. That situation can't bother me anymore. Guess what? You're going to have an experience where that same situation is going to come into play. To test if you are truly ready. If you have truly healed that wound. And if you are not healed, then you know you have more work to do. You have more work to do. Now let me read you James from James 1 verses 2 to 8. And it's about trials and temptations. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete. You hear that? You've got to finish your healing. You've got to work on your wounds so that you are mature, so that you become that empress. Because you're going through a stage to become the empress. Right? So you'll be, you'll be much more mature and complete, not lacking of anything. The masculine is not there. Okay, that's fine. It's me and God. I, I'm not lacking of anything. I'm not lacking of love. I'm not lacking, lacking in finances. I'm not lacking of anything because I have God. Not lacking anything. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt. You see, do not doubt. Try not to doubt. When you doubt, it's the biggest block you can put on what you're praying for. Right? So don't doubt. And like I'm always saying, when you're praying, pray and ask God for things that will not only help you, but will help everybody around you. If you're only praying, God, send me my masculine. God, send me my masculine. God, I want my masculine. God, I want my masculine. What's that? You're just praying for yourself. It's like you don't even care whether the masculine is healthy. You don't even care if they're healed. You don't even care who they're with. You don't even care about nothing. God, just give me what I want. That's it. Simple. I just want my masculine and nothing else. Just give me my masculine. I want him to be with me. But are you ready? Are you in that space to accept the love that your masculine is bringing to you? Because if you're not, there are going to be tests again. That's going to show you, are you ready? Or do you need to do more work? But when he asks, he must, he must believe and not doubt. Because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. Hear that? Three, three, three as I finish that. When you doubt, when you act, when you pray and ask God and you doubt, it just simply shows that you are unstable in all that you do. So it's not only in praying, in every part and, and aspect of your life. Because you doubt anything good to work out for you. You doubt anything would ever work. And most importantly, you doubt the ability of God to deliver what he promised. No doubting. Stop the doubting. So this is why I'm always telling you. The twin flame journey is connected to God. The twin flame journey is it's connected to the Bible. I still haven't even gotten a chance to make that video. Where... I don't remember his name right now, but the book that I bought where it explains the twin flame journey, the dark night of the soul and the twin flames. Just to show you guys that twin flame really is a part of God. Twin flame really does come from God and it is a part of the Bible here. So guys, keep the faith always. And I hope you learned something tonight. I know a lot of people won't sit through this because it's too long, but you can come back later. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I thank you all for being here. 3443. Thank you so much for your support, guys. Thank you. Thank you for those of you who are sending me donation, whether it's through the, the um, Super Chat 
or using the thank you button underneath my videos or sending me donations on my website. Thank you. It does help to keep things going. It helps to keep the light on. You know, it helps to pay for the phone so I can communicate with you guys. It helps a lot. And thank you guys for always standing by my side for your support. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Because you guys, I get my strength knowing that you would be here ready to listen. So thank you for that. You encourage me a lot. Oh, 35, 35. Jesus, isn't that God awesome? And look up these numbers, guys, and see what they're trying to say to you. Whenever you see the numbers, don't just say, oh my God, there's a sign. What's the sign? What is the sign about? What is it telling you to do? What is it saying to look out for? You don't know. Go look it up, please. Every time you see them, look them up so you know where your life is headed. All right? So thank you all for being here. Thank you so much for sharing, subscribing, and also, guys, oh yes, my app. I have, my app is now live. It is in the description box. So if you click on that link, it will take you to the page where you can download my app. And it is safe to download, guys. It's just that it's not coming from the Play Store or the iPhone Store. I don't know what you call it. So just know that it is safe. So you can just download it. And you'll get all my readings. You'll get a link to my precious stone jewelry, guys. And you get a link to all my bath and body products. And guys, I am now making sure that you guys can have your bath and body products for christmas so make sure you check these out whenever i upload them so thank you guys again for everything take care of yourself have a wonderful morning evening noon afternoon twilight whatever it is where you are let one let god and i'll see you tomorrow for your messages later guys i love you all